when you focus on the breath. It's not that you just focus once and then leave it there. Leave the mind to wander wherever it wants. You have to keep after it. Because it's not going to stay there on its own. You have to remind it again and again and again to stay here. Because its normal tendency is to wander. It looks at something and then decides it's had enough and then it moves on. It moves on. It moves on. You have to remind it. You're going to stay here because we're trying to make a difference in the mind, training it with some new habits. You have to have an inner teacher, as the John Fung used to say. The purpose of outside teachers is to train your inner teacher so that ultimately you don't need the outside teacher. Your inner teacher is in charge. And the inner teacher is composed of those three qualities that the Buddha stressed in mindfulness practice. First, there's mindfulness itself. You remember what was said and done a long time ago. In other words, what the teacher said, what the Buddha said about what's skillful and what's not skillful. And what you've learned from your own actions in the past as to what's skillful and what's not. You always want to keep those lessons in, lock, in mind. Because you're going to be making choices in the present moment. You need some guidance. And there's the quality of alertness. Being really clear about what you're doing right now. And the results that you're getting. And then finally, ardency. The desire to do this well. If there's no ardency, if there's just mindfulness and alertness, you can remember things and you can watch things. And you just stay there. Nothing much happens. But if you're ardent, you decide, okay, what I've learned about the skillful and unskillful in the past, I've got to apply that here and now. You have to give rise to the desire to do what's skillful and to abandon what's not. So you've had these three teachers looking after you. And then you can begin to rely on yourself. So unskillful things come up in the mind. You remember, I've been through this before. How did I handle it the last time? Well, I've read about this in Dharma books, and they recommend doing this and this and this. Well, let's give it a try. And then you learn from your actions. Okay, that's one more thing to remember, to keep in mind. What works and what doesn't work for you. And ardency decides, okay, if you can't remember any good lessons, well, remember there are some basic principles that you can learn to extend through your ingenuity. Think of that time when the Buddha, that they, st they tell the story about a, a woman who came by the Buddha while he was meditating, he was looking for the right path. And this woman came and saw him and said, oh, the, the, the mind of any mother with a son like that must be cooled. Well, she used the word Nibbana. And the story goes, said, oh, he said, maybe that's, that's where I should go. Nibbana. That sounds like a good, a good goal, to cool the mind. So of course the woman didn't intend that with her song, but he took it and he made it a lesson. That's using your ingenuity. So when you have these qualities looking after you, okay, you've got a good teacher inside. And then you can rely on yourself wherever you go. This is what it means to have the Dharma as a refuge inside, as the Buddha said, developing, establishing some mindfulness, ardent, alert, and mindful. This is how you de develop a refuge for yourself. Now we can always be safe.